Welcome back everyone, this is Professor Hearing. In this video we're going to continue learning about solutions. We're going to get quantitative in this video. We're going to discuss different ways in which you can express concentration and we're going to talk about different processes called transfer and dilution. Let's begin. So concentration tells us the amount of solute in relation to the amount of solution or solvent. And which of those two is in the denominator, the solution or the solvent, is going to depend on the definition that we use. We've talked already about mass fraction and how this is defined as the mass of solute per mass of solution. And if we want to find the mass percent, that's simply the mass fraction times 100%. We've also already looked at mole fraction when we've talked about gases. This is expressed as X sub I, and this is the moles of solute per total moles of solution. Notice that the only difference between these two is whether we're using mass versus moles. And we've also talked about parts per million, parts per billion, and parts per trillion. Or the mass fraction and for for any of these depending on whether or not you are dealing with um, masses or, 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 or moles generally speaking the mole fraction is going to be used for liquid or solids whereas the mass fraction we typically see with gases but for most of solution chemistry the most important concentration unit is that of molarity. And that's where we take the moles of solute divided by the volume of the solution expressed in liters. And again, this is really the most important, most prevalently used unit when dealing with concentration. So let's try a problem. What's the molarity of water in pure water at 25 degrees Celsius? And we're given the density. So whenever you're doing calculations with concentration units, you want to start by expressing the definition of those units. So for molarity, it's moles, per, moles of solute per liter of solution. And for this particular context, we're, just, we're not given a specific amount, and so we can assume any amount. And just for the mass, for, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to choose a 1,000 gram sample. So let's say we've got 1,000 grams of water. We need to find out the volume of our total solution and also how many moles this is. So to find the volume, we take and convert the mass using the density. And then we need to convert that from milliliters to liters. find the moles of water, we're going to take that mass, divide by the molar mass, to get 55.56 moles of water. Then we can combine those, the, the volume, with the moles to find the molarity. And that gets us 55.56 moles per one liter, or 55.56 molarity water. So that's just a simple demonstration of how to calculate molarity. In the extra practice problems videos, we're going to go through a variety of other scenarios. Another important thing to talk about is when we're discussing um, concentrations of strong electrolytes, we need to account for the fact that these, ion, the, these compounds are dissociating into ions. So for example, if we have calcium chloride dissolving in water, it's going to dissolve, therefore become aqueous, and also dissociate into its calcium ions and the chloride ions. And so let's say that we had one molar solution of calcium chloride. That would break apart when it dissolves into one molar calcium ions and two molar chloride ions. And those come from the stoichiometric coefficients. And that would give us a total concentration of 3 molar. So let's see if this makes sense to you. Go ahead and try this question on your own before I walk you through a solution. Welcome back. 
So we want to know which of these contains the largest concentration of nitrate ions. So what we, uh, what we need to do is account for the stoichiometry as well as the concentration. It turns out that the volumes don't matter because we're just we just care about the concentration. We would use the volumes if discussing the number of ions, but we want the concentration. And so all we need to use is the original concentrations. So for cobalt nitrate, that's 0.5 molar initially times the ratio of two nitrates per cobalt nitrate. That gets us a total of one molar. For ammonium nitrate, that starts out at one molar and has a one to one ratio, so that remains one molar. And then the aluminum nitrate starts out at 0.4 molar, but has a three to one ratio, and so that becomes 1.2 molar, which means that it has the largest concentration of nitrate ions. If we were to ask about the total ion concentration, then we would have to account for the cations as well, and so that would be 0.5 molar cobalt. One molar ammonium. and 0.4 molar aluminum. And so that would be 1.5 molar total, 2.0 molar, and 1.6 molar. So notice that which the one that's most concentrated depends on what we're asking about. And that's where you want to pay attention to those types of scenarios. So when you're making up solutions, you take an initial stock solution. And this is a solution that's more highly concentrated and we can do essentially two different processes. If we pour some of that solution out into a different beaker, that's called transferring. And notice in this case, the volumes are not the same. The number of particles, the moles are not going to be the same, but the concentrations of these will be the same. That's like pouring yourself a drink from uh, a pitcher. It's going to taste the same, have the same concentration. And so our concentration is constant, but the volumes and moles change. If instead we added water, that would make our solution more dilute. We call this the process of dilution. And in this case, the number of moles remains constant, but the volume and the concentration change. And we could do um, a dilution and then a transfer, or a transfer and then a dilution. And so you can compound these together. Let's take a look in, at an example of this. So we've got 10 milliliters of solution, that's two and a quarter molarity of sodium phosphate diluted to 40 milliliters. And we want to know what's the concentration of the sodium ions in the final solution. I would recommend as a first step to draw some images to indicate what's going on, as well as draw out the bounce chemical equation, the dissociation of the ions, to make sure that you have the proper ratios. We know we start with two and a quarter molar of sodium phosphate, and it's a three to one ratio of sodium to sodium phosphate. That gives us six and three quarters molar sodium ions in the initial beaker. Then, to find the, the, the molarity, or using the molarity, we can rearrange and solve for the number of moles of sodium ions. And the reason why we're going to do this is because we remember when we're doing a dilution that moles are constant. So by taking the molarity times the volume, we can find the number of moles of sodium ions that were in the initial beaker. And then to find the new molarity, we can take and divide the moles by the new volume to get 1.69 molar of sodium ions. Now, because the number of moles is constant when we do a dilution, this allows us to take a shortcut, if you will. Because moles is equal to molarity times volume when the volume is in liters, 
we can set this equal to a set of initial conditions and set that equal to the final conditions as well, similar to when we use the ideal gas law. And so we get this equation, m1v1 equals m2v2. And my guess is that if you've taken chemistry before, you've likely seen it at some point. And it's important to note that this only works for dilution. It does not work for chemical reactions. And so you, you might be tempted to use it later when we start getting into chemical reactions, but you need to only use it when we're doing a dilution type process. So let's say that we've got 20 milliliters of some unknown concentration and when we diluted it to 70 and we know its final concentration, we want to know the initial. We can set that equal to, we can uh, M1V1 equals M2. V2, where we, our initial concentration is unknown, our initial volume is 20, the final concentration is 0 0.065 molar of the uh, magnesium nitrate, and the final volume is 70. You can then rearrange and solve for the original concentration of magnesium nitrate. And this should make sense because we know we started, we have to start with a more concentrated solution and our concentration of the original is indeed higher than the final. All right, let's see if this makes sense to you. You should try this problem on your own and then, so pause the video, try this on your own and then come back after you've done it to see if you got it right. Welcome back. Again, I would recommend for our first steps for these types of problems to write out, uh, draw a picture of what's going on to organize the information as well as the chemical equation. So we're given a 50 milliliter sample of ammonium nitrate and so it's going to dissociate and you'll have to excuse that because there's not a two there. Ammonium nitrate, 50 milliliters at 0.436 molar and we're diluting it to 250 milliliters and we don't know the concentration. So we know our initial concentration of nitrate. We're combining it with the second solution of barium nitrate. And we have 200 milliliters or of, of the barium nitrate and when, after we've mixed it with the ammonium nitrate it becomes 250 milliliters. So we're adding these two solutions together. We'll call this solution 1A and solution 1B. You add together 1A and 1B, and that's going to create solution number two. So we wanna know what's the concentration of the nitrate ions. Well, what we can do um, is we have to account for the, the, the coefficients, the fact that we have a one to two ratio of barium nitrate to nitrate, so that's where this number comes from. So our initial nitrate concentrations here are listed because we're given the initial concentration and we've accounted for the stoichiometry. So to find the new concentration, we can take and use this uh, dilution equation. We know the initial concentration and volume. We're solving for the final concentration and we know its volume. Rearrange and we get that we have just under 0.1 molar of nitrate ions, and that is from 1A. From beaker 1B, we start with 0.32 molar and 200 milliliters, and it gets diluted to 250. Rearranging gets us just over a quarter molarity of nitrate ions. And again, that's from 1B. So we can just add together the concentrations of these nitrate ions to get a total of just over one third molar of nitrate ions. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, ask on Piazza in office hours or recitation. Have a good day.